All right, so we'll see how this works out. See how many folks show up. See if anybody's in here already. Took me a minute to get that set up, folks. Sorry about that. This set up. I apparently am not set up for my stream for my phone just yet. So, uh, so let's see. Sounds like mine looks like it's okay. Make sure everybody can hear that. All right. Don't seem to have anybody in just yet. I guess. So, I. Uh, We'll let it roll for a minute, see if anybody shows up. And when you get a chance, can you, you know what? I'll be back in a second. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. I did not because I didn't know what you. I didn't know what you were doing. All right. So let's see here. Hello, fellas. Who all's in here tonight? Let me know. Got my Star Wars hat on. Got my C3PO koozie. Got my kid Ryan. RC Roland. What is up, brother? Appreciate it for being here. Double fist back to you, too, man. Sweet. Um, was having a little problem. I thought I could do this on my phone, so I had everything set up with the phone stream. Not eligible to do it with my phone just yet, so hopefully with some more uh, subscribers at some point in time, we'll make that happen, and I'll try not to vibrate this table because since I'm on my laptop. But uh, So anyway, everything RC, yo, what is up? Thank you so much for being here. Quiz later. Only you three have the answer at this point. So the winner of that quiz later will get a little something, so... Uh, anyway, this is uh, to everybody that's in here tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, I know you got other things going on, so I appreciate you cutting out a couple of minutes here tonight with me. Uh, what I was going to do in this live stream tonight was really just kind of talk about what I got going on. Uh, kind of moved to some new digs here lately, and uh, I've got a lot of planes <laughs> that are still in storage that look exactly like this. Yeah, this is one of the many aeroscopes we've got, but this is what they all look like, and they are hanging in a storage unit from a string like a bunch of fish on a stringer. Uh, so that's pretty much what I have going on. This is a lot of some of the newer inventory and stuff that I've had in boxes, but pretty much everything's still in boxes. But my goal, I think, for this year is really going to be to take a lot of the planes that I've crashed. And if you've seen any of my videos, you've known I've crashed pretty much you know, pretty much everything you see here. I've crashed at one point in time or the other. Um, so I have boxes of Jeff the Lower Alabama. What's up? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. I gave away a little Easter egg later earlier. Jeff, sorry if you missed out on that. But, uh, Thomas, everything RC and RC Roland, uh, you know, they uh, they got the Easter egg on that one. So let's see if you can catch along. Uh, here's a hint for you, though. The bottle might give it away. All right. So anyway, like I was saying, my point for this year, I think, is what I'm going to do is instead of taking a bunch of really nice planes that are still new in boxes, which I do have here, dip, dip, um, I think what I'll do is show you guys, A, some of the things that I do once I do take a plane out of a box, and then from there, some of the things that I go through some of the materials that I use. You heard me talk about uh, paper tape a ton. I'm a big paper tape man. Uh, normally, uh, paper tape, hot glue. This is normally what I do to fix a lot of stuff. Uh, Walmart normally get this kind of stuff. Uh, JJ Hobby Life, what's up, Jay? LJ, what's up? Uh, I got this at the dollar store the other day, fellas. So they have our Dollar Tree. It's that they sell this stuff too. Um, haven't really it, given it a shot yet. Hunter's been using it a bit. Here's Walmart stuff. And we'll see what we'll see, you'll see it just like I will. All right, so the Walmart stuff's ripping a little crazy, and uh, this is very papery here, but this is what I usually use, which is a little bit stiffer. But anyway, so nonetheless, paper tape that is the way to go. Um, and I wanted to show you some of the other things that I use as far as just uh, everyday stuff when I go out in the kit and all that kind of thing. There, um, I don't know if you guys utilize something like this, but in my RC car days and stuff, I utilize a thermal. Uh, digital thermometer type thing. This helps a lot too when you're out just to see uh, how fast, um, you know, something is uh, or how hot something is after you get done running it. I have a 
problems in the past where I get out to a field to do some flying and I get some electrical interference. And this has probably happened to everybody, but I actually have a uh, um, basically a meter to tell me what kind of electrical interference may be around where I happen to be flying. So uh, this is something I keep in the tool bag. Uh, and then some of the other things I was talking about, like some of the other planes that I've crashed and put together, um, I want to basically Frankenstein some planes. Some arrows continue to uh, uh, basically continue that project. And then also I have that EC-1500 that uh, went down a couple of times that I turned around and fixed in 24 hours. And I have a, another one that's still hanging in storage. It's in good shape. But with that one, I think I want to take the props off, slap a couple 70 millimeter EDFs on that. And I want to turn that into an EDF plane. So going to be planning on doing that this year too as well uh but some of the other things that you've seen on some of my planes like that aero scout on the pontines that i have that has the led kit on it this is the kit fellas the five dollar kit i got at walmart 488 actually and this is the kit that you would use on these things i'll show you what comes in the kit if you haven't ever purchased these before see you. nothing a little bag in the bag you got strip remote power cord now the power cord has the connector there that goes to this strip. this out is a five volt output so it's just regular usb so you can either put a small battery bank in your vehicle plane whatever hook this up and be able to control the modes with this little five dollar kit or you can snip this off and plug it into a US or plug it into the ESC in one of your open ports because that also puts out five volts. Uh, so that's something to think about there. So I will show you how we do some of those. Uh, and then as far as some of the other new planes, like I said, what I'm going to do is probably just take those out and um, basically uh, show you how I clean them off. Go ahead and put like Mod Podge on them, put the polyurethane on them lightly sand them, clean them off, all that kind of stuff, which alcohols you can use, which ones you shouldn't use. Um, and then, you know, those kind of things. Uh, Thomas M., what's up, man? Uh, how's my RC skydiver going? Glad you asked, brother. Glad you asked. Because this... Well, this is nothing. Even Justin Bieber's not in here. This is... So, okay, here we go. This is the other guy. Here's Action Man right here. Okay, RC Skydiver. To man right here. He is coming along just fine. He is still working great. Uh, I did see some other videos, because apparently this is a really popular hobby in uh, Europe, especially Germany. I don't know if you guys have ever watched any of those RC Skydiving videos, but they're serious about this. They drop these off a couple of big planes to try to land them in big bullseyes in the middle of fields. I mean, it's serious business over there. Here, not so much, but I did see through some of those videos, just based the way I have the string set on this canopy, I do need a couple extra out to, uh, exterior guidelines to go to his hands. So uh, that is the next step. But I think we are we are so close, so close to getting that. Um, so thanks for asking about that. That ought to be coming out here soon. Well, uh, and then also, since we moved to some new digs, we did uh, actually uh, go out locally this today. We had a little kind of nice, kind of 10 mile an hour wind. So I'm in North Georgia here, uh, Beaufort to be exact. and um, we had 10 mile an hour winds, blue skies, but kind of windy, super cold still. So we went up there and uh, found a great place to do airplane stuff, drone stuff, car stuff, and crawling stuff all in the same area based on this old uh, football field they cut in half kind of thing and they don't use anymore. So uh, that's a cool area. And so we're going to look at uh, doing some of that too. So, But also this year I wanted to kind of do some more live streams and I wanted to get out and kind of ask you guys, hey, what is it that you guys like to see? I know you guys like watch a lot of live streams a lot of you do your own live streams um so if there's anything particular that you'd like to see or you like to see my, my videos or don't like to see my videos don't feel free to ever you know don't feel bad if to ever dave that sucked i didn't like that i've had a guy tell me before the loop music sucked so guess what i don't think i don't put the loop music in there anymore you guys uh put give me suggestions i usually don't mind those especially if they're not hateful which they normally are so and i don't and i appreciate you guys watching so i'll always try to take your suggestions and uh, show you what we're doing uh we'll get into more about the cameras and stuff that i use and some of my other live streams and some of the other stuff that i do use but wanted to kind of let you know that i had some products where i was going to take them out maybe do some unboxings show you how i detail and make them look like they're natural live scale planes and then some of the planes that i've got busted uh, we're going to frankenstein some of those things together uh, maybe put some P39 parts with some P1 parts or something like that. I, I don't know. We'll see. I've got a lot of options. So 
once I get the box out here and start ruffling through these styrofoam parts, you guys can kind of get an idea as to what that is. And then for your car heads out there, I'm probably going to start doing some videos with car related stuff and then crawler related stuff. Uh, you may have seen in the preview video for this particular video that I got the uh, Typhoon H. So we'll be doing some uh, aerospace. Matt, hey man, appreciate you showing up. I really appreciate you that. Um, and um, gonna test that out today. That thing is. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the unique Typhoon H. It's the one with the is it six eight blades and the legs go up. Is it six or a six? Anyway, but anyway, the cool thing about it, unlike the uh, Q500 4K, uh, which is a great camera as well, but this one has the okay, just hovering there. And since the legs go up, the camera on the bottom actually does a 360, and you can control how fast that goes. So I won't have to have a worry about trying to chase a plane or something. I just sit that plane up there and then just fly around the drone. It should work pretty good based on that camera movement. So that should be some pretty cool videos coming up. Of course, I use those Insta360 goes a ton, um, and we'll probably start doing some more stuff with that as well. And probably the Insta camera following me around a little bit. Let's do a little bit of this waviness which makes you sick uh and speaking of makes you sick i wanted to do things like that a lot of times you'll see two different uh stabilization modes one is the uh flow state stabilization that insta 360 puts out and that's where you see whatever the is in the, the camera is in go around the camera but the horizon is always flat so that's flow state and then you see the other one where it's uh, it's fpv stabilization where it does flip but the plane flips a little more than the horizon but it seems a little bit more like fpv type view so if there's one of those views that, uh, hey, uh, Parker Brummel's in the house from the beach. Oh, that kid's down in Florida, I think. Thanks for showing up, man. Appreciate it. Um, and um, so if you guys like those views or anything like that, if you have suggestions. Also, I wanted to kind of put it out there. I know I'm one of the smaller channels, and some of you guys may be the smaller channels as well. But I think the thing that really help us all out is if we maybe try to do some collabs. And I know with Corona and all that stuff, we can't really get together so much. But... If you are, uh, hey mom, okay, I guess the hey honey kind of gives it away. My mom's on the channel. <laughs> hey mom. So anyway, so uh, nonetheless, uh, if you guys want to do some collabs, I think that'd be neat. If you happen to have a similar plane or hey, I got that or hey, I got this or that car or something like that. I'm thinking of things like uh, setting up like uh, paper streamer limbo competitions that we can do in different parts of the state and just, you know, measure it so you can get lower without crashing and then just swap videos and post those on our channels, um, things of that nature. Um, so we can't really do a lot of formation flying. Has anybody heard, I don't know, has anybody heard whether or not Flight Fest or any of those is going to be going on this year? Because um, I haven't seen anything on the internet about it. It only talks about the stuff from last year. So does anybody out there know? If you do, give me a shout out there. Hunter, are you uh, seeing the stream over there, too? Okay, so if you see somebody ask a question or something, just give me a shout. Let me know in case I'm on a ramble or not. But, um, all right, so anyway, so if you guys happen to know, that'd be great. Aerospace, Matt, yep, he don't know either. So hopefully at some point in time, we'll get a chance to all get together at some point. But right now, I appreciate showing up to my live stream. So, um, so speaking of some of the things that I have talked about, newer stuff, older stuff, things like that, is there anything in particular that you have seen on my channel that, would like to see me redo or something simple like, uh, you know, how to unbox a plane because uh, I know getting the foam out of the box is probably one of the hardest things sometimes, but I actually have a fix for that if somebody ever needs that. So, uh, uh, Thomas M, let's see, repair planes. My dad and I have fixed a few planes, that paper tape idea. You are welcome, my friend. Did you happen to see where I told you earlier you can also get it at Dollar Tree, I noticed? It's only one pack, but it's only a dollar. Uh, when you get the stuff at Walmart, it looks like this. It's two in a pack. That Equate brand, I think their brand, is like two forty-eight or something, yeah, almost three bucks. So, dollar dollar store. It is a little bit thinner, but I'll, I'll test it and see how it works. But you are certainly welcome. I appreciate uh, you trying those out. Um, and then also, I don't know if you saw some other things, but you know, sometimes that that glue can get a little rough on that paper. The cool thing is, is once it does. Um, actually settle into that paper literally fellas you haven't tried it try it on a cracked wing sometimes just just try it <laughs> it's so cheap just try it it is literally like a fiberglass repair however it's not hard like fiberglass it still bends just like the foam does it's just paper tape and hot glue but if you do happen to have a it won't break there again but if it does happen to break there again do you have to break the glue out no no you just get the gun and just reheat it remelt it put a bit another piece of tape on it it's just the most simple repair and that white paper stuff just, I mean, it just blends into paint, into planes. It's the exact same color. So I, I don't really do any of the 
other epoxies type thing. I'm really, I'm just a, I crash so much stuff. I can't expect, I can't spend money on epoxy. You know how many sticks of hot glue I can get for the same amount as a bottle of epoxy. Yeah. So I just crashed too much stuff. So, uh, but anyway, so yeah, the Viper jet now, um, that has been a bane of my existence. I don't know if anybody out there <clears throat> has flown the E-Flight Viper jet. I have had two of those mofos. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> I have a two of those mofos and I cannot get that thing to fly for flip. I, the first day I've got a video way back in my channel. Cause I have almost like 300 videos or something, but way back in my channel where I made in three planes <laughs> one day. And that was the P 59. I think the, uh, the Cherokee and then also the uh, Viper jet. And that day, everything flew fine. That was the last time I ever flew a plane for jet worth a flip. After that, the next time I flew it, I flew it. It was fine, and it was pilot error. I was doing some tricks and uh, hit what I thought was the safe button for recovery. It wasn't, so there wasn't a safe recovery. So um, that one was toast. And then the other one, which you saw that I repaired three or four times because I was so mad with this plane, uh, that one was one where it just, you guys may have seen the video, it just took off and just, whoosh. I have no idea what happened. Some people have commented about the whole, um, you know, I had a camera on, done, but I did i did have a camera on each wing but you know the same exact run cam two cameras so one on the top one on the bottom hopefully the weight your same spot the weight should have been there so i don't know so we get an e-flight a10 i want to get one uh aerospace matt i do have an e-flight a10 as a matter of fact and you may i do have a couple of videos on there where i actually kind of detailed that one up and flew it i think i got it to 109 on my first run and then did it get any higher than 110 I, did it get to 112? Okay. Uh, I don't know. The F-16 I've got. And if anybody, that's another great challenge that I'll just throw out there now. That F-16 Thunderbird, uh, the 70 millimeter. I got that with 120. One, uh, 120. I'd like to say 122. I'm going to say 120. I'm going to be honest with the cats here. So anyway, so 120. So if anybody can get that on film uh, with a little GPS, something or other, uh, and I'll even accept radar gun, see how that works. Um, but uh, if you're blowing me out with that radar gun, I'm going to want to see something on board. But uh, I'll throw that out, see if anybody can uh, beat 120 on that F-16 Thunderbird. That's a fun one. Uh, but yeah, the E-Flight, that is a great plane. Um, this probably happens to you guys too. When you buy a plane, something really nice, say a Air, you know, really any plane, they're all nice. But when you get it, of course, that first flight, you know, well, if it's a plane that you've always admired, I've always been a Warthog fan. I always loved the Corsair. Those are my two favorite planes from the get to go. So when I got it, I was so excited, right? Yeah, I just detailed it, hung it on the ceiling. I just, uh, I just wanted to look at it and all of its glory, never fly it. And then one day I got the guts up to fly it and it was great. It's been a great plane. Uh, and then, uh, but the first A-10 I ever bought was that FMS, uh, Dynam. That's what it is, the Dynam A-10, which comes as like a, pre-flight kit i think it came with its own controller and stuff uh and that is only a 3s plane but that's the one i painted like the gi joe curve or a rattler that blue and i had some rattler stickers or something i even actually had the rattler in my toy box down in the basement when we were moving uh with the pilot and stuff so uh, i could put him in there too but we won't talk about the kid stuff you already see what kind of <laughs> big kid i happen to be but um haven't flown a thunderbird uh but i haven't flown it yet i have a thunderbird yeah okay so Thunderbird, that's one of those that, again, super, super pretty plane. I was super worried to fly. And then uh, only thing I could recommend on that, and this is pretty much with any jet, uh, watch your rates, of course, because sometimes, uh, like I always want to take off in high rates because that's just, I think that's what they tell you to do. But with jets, sometimes it just goes. And ah, for me, that's cool. You know, we're doing a jet stole competition, just short takeoff. But uh, I like a little bit more of a scale, so I kind of do medium sometimes. But if I'm worried about it or something, I'll definitely do high high rates. So that's the only thing I recommend on that. But uh, besides that, the plane flies great. Um, and then maybe since I'm, I'm the only thing I would rather recommend on that too, since it does have the um, uh, actual suspension a little bit on the sh on the landing gear. I would recommend maybe shooting a little of the, uh, some dry lube in there, like a WD-40 or something like that. Not the wet stuff, but there's actually like a dry lubricant. That way it won't pick up as much dirt and grime and stuff. It's almost kind of like a spray soap, almost. It's kind of like that consistency, but that helps a lot. It keeps the squeaking down, and they really are spongy, so when it lands, you get a nice soft landing. So there's a nice recommendation for you. Hope you get that. Hope that works. Anybody else out there has got a uh, favorite current plane right now? Because um, right now, 
really have a favorite. I got a lot of favorites because I have a lot of problems, as you can see. You're welcome out anytime, buddy. Anytime. So anybody, anybody else out there got a favorite plane that they have but haven't flown or have flown and just need to fly some more? Uh, if you uh, ever watch uh, Jeff and Lower Alabama's channel, you'd think, uh, you know, every one of his planes is his favorite, too. <laughs> He and I got a lot of the same problems, and yes. Uh, so I, I I wouldn't know if he had an actual answer on some way back because he loves the moon planes. Um, but yeah, so, you know, an RC Roland. Um, yeah, you've, I've seen your stuff. You get, you enjoy that plane as well. Yep, the F-15 F Thunderbird. Uh, F-16 Thunderbird, yeah, that's a great plane. Um, I wish they would bring out, um, I, I really wish, here's what I wish Horizon Hobby would do, and I know they're not listening to me, of course, but um, but maybe they listen to one of you cats. So you, we'll see. But I wish they would bring out uh, with their newer technologies more UMX stuff, and I wish they would bring out more scale UMX stuff. I mean, they're already 130 bucks for that little ass plane. So if it were, um, I only have planes I like to fly, <laughs> but I like to fly, and I have over 30 planes. Yeah, that sounds about right, Jeff. <laughs> That's what I expected. But I wish they would bring out more scale stuff like i would list you know they had brought out that cirrus which is a neat little plane the landing gear suck which i know it's i get it it's hard but the like taylor craft they make a you know rage they make a good uh plane with good fairly good stiff landing gear and things like that and they use wood components and stuff and not just all foam so maybe that's something they can consider but i would love for them to bring out like a mini p39 Air Cobra, <laughs> you know, a mini like the mini mig that thing is awesome if anyone knows ever flown the umx mig that thing is awesome so you know, even like, uh, you know, bring out the mini Trojans. We don't have to wait on, what is it? Who's bringing those out? It's not Will Toys. Who's bringing those out? All those little things out right now. You guys know who's bringing those out? They got the the P-51. They got the little Corsair, and they just brought out that little T-28. Who is it? Isheen. That's who it is. Isheen's bringing those out. So why can't, why can't uh, uh, you know, Horizon jump on that man wagon? Um, I do like that new... Uh, that Fock Wolf, that FW 190. I got a little tiny one right there on the ceiling. But... The Cirrus front wheel. Now, on the UMX plane or on the big plane? Uh, screw comes loose. So that's probably, these are probably the big planes talking about. Okay, so screws coming loose. Again, I, you'll probably hear people say, you know, use like uh, Loctite or something like that. I, I use just that hot glue. <laughs> And then if I'm really worried about it, I just put a little piece of paper tape over it. It'll never fall out. But as far as like the, it's kind of a very similar setup on the, on the actual Cirrus large plane as it is on the one where it has just like that main single pin that goes in where on the UMX is kind of like that little bent over paper clip that just kind of forces them there. But this bad boy's got the same problem because it's basically just a little, I don't know, it, that may not even be as thick as maybe like a, an ink tube inside like a big pen, but, and then you have that, that little gap right between it and the actual fuselage. And that's where the problem is, but there's no give there. And what they should really do there is just put themselves maybe one, two flat plastic washers. You see them all over the place and all kinds of other things, something like that. They're just, so it's still flexible. So you take care of that gap. It's so on that landing gear hits. It doesn't have the chance to go left and right. It has that nice, and if you have two of them in there, you can get that nice sandwich. So keep sliding on. Um, you know, that would be great. Eric, good to see you, brother. We talk all the time. I'm glad you're on the channel as well. Thank you for being a part of my first live stream. I won't think neutral as far as thing. wanted to wear my Thunder Buddies thing, but Hunter said no. <laughs> so anyway, I'm wearing something normal. But, uh, but anyway, so yes, thank you so much. Thanks for everybody being here. I see we've got nine guys in here right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, one goal that I do have, want to kind of pass on to see if you might be able to get your help with is uh, I had 54 subscribers at the beginning of 2009, no, 2020, 54. And then um, at the end, I was at 357. So I had right over 300, which is fantastic. Thank you so much. This year, I'd like to see if I can hit that thousand. Not so much because I want to collect money or like that, but just because I want to be able to post those things so that you guys can see them more in the little stream thing or whatever, because unless I post a video or something like this, you guys cut. It's hard to put the word out there. So if I can at least get to that thousand, I can put that word out a little bit more. So if you guys spread the word a little bit, that would be great. I'd appreciate it. I'll always give you a shout out. And uh, EQRC, what's up, buddy? I uh, just saw you, uh, wasn't it your video last night? I had commented on with those... Uh, wasn't it the quantum bomb drops? 
my stream is kind of blurring out and lagging on. Really, Jeff, you're you're in Lower Alabama. Anyway, you can get to Upper Alabama real quick for a better signal. <laughs> I'm just messing. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, but yeah, EQ, I think it was your video, if I'm not mistaken, that you were showing those. I'm kind of glad you're here, actually, because speaking of the dollar store, and if you haven't seen his video uh, about the um, uh, quantum bomb drops, check those out. The cool thing about those quantum bomb drops, those green plastic bombs that kind of snap and happy fill them with powder and stuff, they are cool. However, they are plastic. So they do come with a foam, like almost a Nerf nose that you can cap on the front. Um, but after it hits the concrete one or two times, it's cutting through that. So speaking of dollar store, you may have seen me drop these off my Aero Scout before. Okay. So these are the little footballs that you can get at the dollar store. Here's the cool thing about these. They come with two whistles. Okay, so if you just want to put whistles on your plane, just rip them right off the football, put them on your plane. You got whistles on your plane. You get two for the dollar. You can pull this bad boy out. Use the bomb, put it in there. Hot, put it back in if you want. Paint it, turn it into a bomb. But those, those quantum bomb drops come with another plastic. I don't know. Let's just say this is it. So you can mount it to whatever. And that part actually sticks to the drop release. So you get these. A dollar, two whistles and all this stuff. Here's the best part. They make them bigger now. Again, bigger with bigger fins. Again, still two whistles, two whistles, dollar. So go to Dollar Tree and buy these. Mount as many as you want on as many planes as you want and drop them all over the place. And if you want to have contests, I'm dropping them into hula hoops and let's post that and collab on those. <laughs> we can get a whole bunch of us doing that. So that would be pretty great. Let's see. What else? What else do I have in the... Uh, Thanks. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna bring out a product to see. I'm about to whip out a product to see if you guys use this. Who is familiar with this product? Mod Podge. I'm sorry, maybe backwards on your screen. It's backwards on mine. But Mod Pods. Who's familiar with this? This stuff is the bomb. Dizzle. I didn't get that at Dollar Tree. Hunter. This stuff. I got this oh, one. No, oh, the bomb, the footballs, Dollar Tree, dollar, dollar, dollar. As a matter of fact, here's my receipt from Dollar Tree. I'll tell you how much I spent at Dollar Tree. I got four footballs, three rolls of tape, and something else, and my total was six forty-eight. There you go. <laughs> so not bad. So that's that. But Mod Podge. This is the stuff that I use on all of my repairs. I use on pretty much. Most of my straight white foam planes that have just decals on them, um, I've used it on air cover repair. This stuff is like, what's well, like a, what is that stuff? Not paper mache stuff. Uh, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. It is fantastic. This stuff makes these foam planes smooth and stiff because when they get uh, some of this Mod Podge dried on them, it's almost like a spackle for planes. They get fat, they get smooth and then durable, which is in my game is fantastic. But regardless whether you use that, I always recommend that you put this on planes. Water-based polyurethane. I get the stuff made for floors because it's a little bit more durable. <laughs> Not that, that matters with any of my planes, but I get it anyway. It doesn't yellow, doesn't do anything like that. It cleans up with water. I put this on pretty much every plane. I have actually seen the difference with a plane fresh out of the box, not coated with this, and how fast it would go, and a plane, same plane out of the box, coated with this, and how much faster it went. Even though it had extra weight, for some reason, just that smooth coating just makes these planes just sing. So definitely worth track checking that out. We keep plenty of that around. And then also, I wanted to also bring this up. I see a lot of folks this time of year talking about uh, flying and cold hands and stuff, and I get it. I get them, too. This is what I use. This may not work for you, but for me, I like it because you get a, so many of them in a bag. But the reason I like these is they got the rubber fingertips and stuff. So still get good grip on your controller, still get grip on your, on your sticks, uh, you know, so you're not getting so cold. Not super thermal, but at the same time, better than bare hands. And this bag of like, I don't know, 10 pairs, I don't know, 10 bucks. So... That's what I do. So hopefully that will help out because you see these everywhere. Nobody's maybe nobody's thought about using them for controllers on RC stuff. But they work great. And if you're using a car controller holding it, it's 
almost like Spider Man. It's hard to like, <laughs> sometimes hard to like feel the controller. Um, of course, another must have tool in the arsenal. You guys don't have one of these. Yep, Eric says less drag. That's right, my friend. That's right. Put that polyurethane on them on there. Water based polyurethane. Don't accidentally buy the oil based polyurethane. It will eat your foam. You'll realize it as soon as you buy it. Put it on there. Okay. Foam brushes. I might go through a ton of these, fellas. So if you don't use these, this is what I do. Uh, let's see. Gummy bears, just in case. Uh, let's see. Fishing line. I usually go with a, this is a 50 pound test. And I just uh, got some saggy links because got bombs on. Just bring some fishing line over it. Want to hang some planes from the ceiling? Fishing line over it. Uh, got something stuck in a tree. Can tie some line to it. Fishing line does not get snagged in trees. Just keep that in mind. Kite string does. Everything, every string I can think of gets caught in trees, but I've never seen fishing line. I've never had a problem with fishing line. Now, the thing that I threw into the trees tied to the fishing line gets stuck, but the line will always pull out. Have you ever seen it not pull out? But that's why I also get the 50 pound test. Yeah, yeah. So a great, a great item to have 50 pound test, super cheap at Walmart. Uh, maybe an old sock with some sand in it. And if you ever get something caught in a tree, what? What about a first date? Making jokes over there. Um, so great, great way to help get things out of trees. Uh, let's see what else is in my kit to show you. Let's see, I think I just bought a fancy brush. Oh, I don't know if you guys use this frog tape. And I use the yellow frog tape because this is for the super gentle stuff. Uh, once you put polyurethane on there, you don't really have to worry too much about what tape you use on there. That stuff won't come off, which is dry well. Um, but when I do want to do some, I use the yellow. I don't know if anybody has a better idea. But that's what I use. Uh, of course, just some regular old brushes. <sighs> if you ever get a chance to see this, and I haven't seen it forever, and when I did see it, I bought three of these. But if you ever get a chance to see this while you're out and about, get it. Clear duct tape. <laughs> this is duck brand, but Gorilla also makes them. Clear duct tape. Have it in your car while you are flying. This stuff can put your plane immediately back together until you get home to use your hot glue paper tape. But the clear is awesome. So I haven't seen it in forever. So I bought three rolls of that. And then just because I was feeling fancy, I also bought a roll of glitter duct tape <laughs> because this would look cool on surfaces like uh, elevator, I mean, rudder, things like that where it would bounce off the sun. Uh, maybe even on uh, some under panels. That kind of stuff. Uh, everybody out there's probably got their own favorite headlamp. Uh, and then steel wool. Here we go. Four aught. Super, 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 super fine stuff. This is what I use to step up lanes before I put hodgepodge on them or polyurethane or something like that. And then what I will do after I do that, I will take a brush. Uh, here's my fancy brush. So if anybody's got a brush fancier than this, it's a brush. Same fancy. How do I open it without destroying it? How do I open it without? Nope, never mind. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So anyway, brush. Brush it off or air it off if you have a compressor. But a nice brush always works good. And this will be a brush that I won't ever actually put anything on. I'll just use it for cleaning. Just use it for helping to put on decals. Just use it to help put on... Uh, uh, laminates, things like that. Uh, like on the, well, you may have seen some of the planes, but I use a lot of that checkerboard. Uh, you'll see laminate on, on some of my planes. To be honest with you, that's just shelf liner. I don't buy anything super fancy. <laughs> I don't buy any of the self-adhesive shelf liner that you can get. I almost wanted to buy some to make my plane look like it was made out of wood or granite <laughs> or checkerboard. So, uh, so that's pretty fun. And then uh, also while I'm at Walmart, I always buy is this stuff super cheap? Latex metallic type paints that they have. They have some gold and silver, some things like that. This stuff is awesome for just want to shine up your landing gear on a plane, add some details to the cowl, uh, open motor uh, planes like the Corsair and things like that that have the, the cylinder heads, you know, dab some of this in there, whatnot, with a little brush, a little artist type brush. Uh, give those some flares. I got the, that Corsair. Um, or I put the ES, uh, the, the AR636B, I think, that way, and I added safe to it. But I did a lot of detail work with that in there. Um, so let's see. And that's probably 
if I ever do want to use a glue on something, it's not often, but if I ever do want to use a glue on something like, I don't know, just say brown paper bag from the grocery store, which I don't even think you can get brown paper bags anymore, but say if you want to uh, use wrapping paper, uh, Christmas wrapping paper on a plane or something to discover it, I usually use just a clear glue and just mix it with a little bit of water. So that's what I use there. So, and then of course, since you've seen me having to dig things out of the woods, I have a nice light. <laughs> Just for that. Uh, let's see. And then what else? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And then some other stuff. I uh, just recently got the Habu. So we have the um, uh, Real Flight 8 that I've been flying and now the trainer version. So that's pretty interesting. So, um, you know, if that's uh, if anybody hasn't done any right now, it's really cold and windy here in Georgia. So we've been flying the simulator like nobody's business. And uh, even though Hunter's not really a big fan of flying, <laughs> He is, uh, he's good at the, he's hanging some of these, I mean, he's, he can hang these planes on the simulator on the prop. Uh, it'll flip over. Literally, I am, I know it's on the simulator, so I, I'm not worried, but still I'm worried, <laughs> but he will, it, he'll hang it on the prop and he's literally five feet off the ground and then it flips. Does it crash? No, of course not. No, not at all. <laughs> he just gets it, keeps it on going. Yeah. He's been flying for, I don't know, what is that? 20, 22 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so I've been flying for quite a bit longer, but, uh, you know, anyway, so you may end up seeing him doing some really cool stuff here in the future. Uh, we were planning on having him uh, fly some here in the background, uh, but I had to use my laptop with the real flight to play playing it. And then I realized I did not have the capability of um, streaming my, from my phone. So I had to kind of throw this to the laptop. So <laughs> I never crash. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's possible. <laughs> that's possible. So, um, so anyway, yeah, so I didn't want to really take up a whole heck of a lot of time. I said it would take probably about 30 minutes or so. I see that we're about 640, 641 mark here. Um, I hope everybody's having a fantastic New Year so far. I don't know about you, but 2021 sure seems a lot more awesome than 2020. I mean, I know 2020 is all about clarity, but <laughs> there was nothing clear <laughs> about 2020. So hopefully everybody's doing really well in 2021. Things are going pretty well. I have not moved into my new digs. This is just kind of... Um, you know, this is, I'm borrowing the space right now <laughs> that way. So uh, who knows where I'll be coming from next. Maybe again here, we'll see if I can borrow it again, but we are coming very soon with um, trying to uh, get everything set up and get stuff out of the storage unit and get it from being all wrapped up in plastic. Cause if you missed that from earlier, this is, this is literally what <laughs> pretty much every other plane you've seen. You saw any of my videos with all the planes hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, pretty much all of those all look like this now. <laughs> and they are all hanging like fish on a stringer in a storage unit. One of three storage units that I have, not just for the RC stuff, but, but one of three storage units nonetheless. So uh, anyway, so yeah, I just want to kind of go over, let you know what I had going on. Big plans about, you know, just kind of doing some detailing, some unboxings, maybe things like that. The biggest thing I want to do is actually start getting some of the other junk planes that I got in the boxes of rubble put them together somehow, maybe just make some Frankensteins and let's see if we can <laughs> get them to fly. And also wanted to reach out uh, about seeing if anybody was interested in doing some collabs, you know, like dropping Nerf ball, Nerf things off of, into hula hoops or whatever like that from where you are. And we'll do it all over and see who can win. Maybe get a, you know, collab of a few channels or something simple. If you're a car guy or a drone guy, or you have options there, uh, we can try all kinds of stuff, but I'm going to continue to move on with, Working on the RC Skydiver, I got to get that perfected. I'm going to continue working on the EDF Aero Scout. I'm totally going to get that perfected. It's pretty close. Going to Frankenstein an EDF EC1500. So that ought to be interesting. And then uh, also, I'm just going to be Frankenstein as much stuff as I can. So I appreciate everybody being here. I'm not going to run too much longer. I know we got some other things coming up soon. So I greatly appreciate you taking a little bit of time out today. Let me know what you thought about it in the, th in the comments below. I'd greatly appreciate it. All comments are welcome. If there's something you didn't like or you're not a Star Wars fan or think I'm dumb or goofy or anything, I don't know. Have great comments about how things are. Love to hear it all. So I'll, I'll, as long as it's creative, I'll take it. And we'll see about checking you out next time. I think uh, also put down there when you would like to see. I know a lot of guys do these things uh, once a week, uh, you know, every couple of days, once a month. I'm cool with every couple of weeks, once a month. You guys let happen us every week, but you know, let me know. And if so, I'll make sure that we have a project and something to actually do and something to actually talk about uh, next time. So I really, really appreciate it. Let's see. 
I want to find, uh, uh, let's see. I want to find somebody to do some jousting, R.C. Rowland said. Now, jousting, is this uh, jousting as in with planes or jousting as in like real life stuff? This is a great time slot, 6 p.m. on Sunday. Oh, okay. The after dinner show. Mm -hmm, okay. I like that. Hey, that's fun. I just ate. Maybe you guys just ate too. So that's fun. The after dinner show with Dave. Let's do that. Maybe I'll bring in some leftovers. We'll talk about what we ate. I will most likely always win, though. <laughs> that's a nod to mom there. She uh, made the dinner night sauce. Uh, let's see. All right, Eric. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, if you guys like that, so, and if, uh, just let me know if, you know, uh, once a week, once every other week, once a month, once a year. Last time you want to see me this year, just let me know what you think. I'll, I'll listen to it. I'll be glad to listen to it. And uh, let me know if you know if you got if anybody's got a little car uh, head in them and uh, want to see some car stuff or something like that. Maybe I'll make some separate channels or separate videos for those. Or when we just keep focusing on the planes and all that stuff, just let me know that too. I'll be glad to hear it. Always glad to hear what you guys have to say, and always glad to see there. I'm glad that I can be an inspiration sometimes. And always looking to help out. So if you ever have questions about anything, I might not have the answer, but I probably have a pretty creative something for you. So it's worth at least asking. So I guess, yeah, Hunter, you got anything you want to say out there? A little shout out to the, the folks at home. Thanks for welcome to the 2021 Dave yourself. Okay. That sounds like a pretty good sign off to me. So until next time, I guess I'm Dave. That's Hunter. This is uh sort of digs. So I guess we'll look to see you soon. Uh, and, uh, oh, Musky Bob just got in there. Okay. You know what, bro? Musky Bob, uh, he said he was going to show up with a burger and a beer in his hand. So I don't have a burger because I already ate, but to you, Musky Bob, we'll get, we're going to, we're going to wait around a few more minutes just to, uh, just for you, Musky. If you guys haven't checked out Musky Bob's channel, you need to do that too. He's, he's definitely got, uh, he, he definitely has one thing that I'm going to be uh, stealing from him at some point. And it's really not a steal. Everybody should do it. But he makes sure that he has his logo on his planes, always in camera view. That's a, that's a smart cookie over there, that musky bud. He's a smart cookie. So, so, yeah, man. So, that's good stuff. So, I appreciate it. Yeah. So, I'll be glad to uh, next year we'll probably do this again, talk about some stuff. Oh, here's a little trivia thing for you. How many of you probably wonder what the pool noodles for? When I created this channel a year and a half ago, how many of you knew that this channel was meant to be 101 uses for pool noodles? I had 102 uses for pool noodles, and I was going to use make two per episode and have 51 episodes right off the bat. I don't think I have one solid pool video on this channel <laughs> since then. I do have some things on there where I've shown you how to use pool noodles and stuff, especially with RC planes. They make great uh, wing protectors, cut a slit in it, slap it on a plane. Uh, great little wheel chocks, you know, cut a hole in it, put it on the wheels. They don't roll in the wind, you know, all kinds of neat stuff like that. But I don't think I've done one actual pool thing in there. So, uh, but anyway, maybe I'll do some of that this year because uh, if you don't get pool noodles after summer when they're cheap at pool noodles, dollar store, whatever, uh, you should do that because they are so handy. I'll even show you, I'll show you all kinds of things that aren't RC related that are just awesome. <laughs> But um, so anyway, so nonetheless, so yeah, I really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys were able to catch it up. Um, hopefully next time I have a little bit different setup because I wouldn't mind having the, I got a TV over there and we were going to do some of that uh, real flight going on in the back room. Hunter was planning to do some, I'm going to do some hovering while you're talking and distract you. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> but maybe in the next show it will be. So I don't mind if he distracts me. He's about it. He's too big for me to tell him to go away. So anyway, guys are really, 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 and ladies. Really, 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 really appreciate you guys being here tonight. So fun. So nice. My first show, pretty crazy. We're rolling up on 45 minutes here, so we're going to call it at night. So until next time, I'm Dave. That's Hunter. You guys here, you guys. And please stay you. Please spread the word. And let's see if we can get some more smiles on this channel. But right now, you can have mine. And I can't wait till I see yours. So until next time, I'm out. Take it easy. All right, that's a roll. Oh, I got to hit the button. <laughs> all right guys take it easy first live stream all right can't wait to see, can't, can't wait to see a million see you